Are you the captain of Emergency Sir? Watch all episodes of Ice Pilots. Watch on mobile devices or the big screen. All for free. No subscription required. This week, I've always been able to wow people. A cocky young rookie gets his shot. That's gonna be my office. <laughs> and gets shot down. All right, get your hands out of there. I'm gonna beat you into submission first. Adam braves heavy winds to rescue the C-46. And Graham tries to keep up. What are you doing, Graham? With Buffalo's fastest plane. Don't die with the <laughs> ground. Hang on to your hats, boy. It's Friday, and the best day of the week for Rampy Chris Staples. Oh, it just turned into a fantastic Friday. Friday's the day he dumps his day job as Buffalo's cargo manager to train on the C-46. I basically agreed to do a job, which I didn't come up here to do, which kind of sucks, to be honest, with the agreement that sooner or later, I'll you know go back to you know, flying airplanes. The 46 is a notoriously difficult plane to fly. And for Chris, that's the appeal. I had some pretty superb flight training back home. I've always been able to wow people, and all my instructors have always, you know, through school, have always been impressed with my flying and everything else. Being self-confident and cocky a lot of times is a mask. I mean, I might as well get the hardest one out of the way first so that I can handle anything, you know? And a lot of times it's legitimate, but right now Chris is unproven. Today, he'll have to prove himself beside Captain Devin Brooks. It's like Mikey says, you gotta dangle the carrot a little bit. You know, he wants to get a little stick time. They're heading on the regular supply run up the Mackenzie Valley. But for Chris, today will be a test. Two stops, we're cold, we gotta move. I find that you know, Devin, he's a little intense. You know, he's really keeping you on your toes and thinking and, you know, kind of letting you know that, like, hey, you're flying a C-46 right now. You know, there's no dicking around. And Devin doesn't like young rookies thinking they can decide what they're going to fly. Of course he wants to fly a 46 as your first checkout. Shit, you go make lots of money. You fly 1,000 miles a day. But it could be a lot more plain than Chris can handle just yet. It wouldn't turn out too well for uh, Chris to push, push, push and try to get on that airplane because maybe you should fly with Joe. Learn how to fly from uh, each and every captain before you get on a bigger airplane. Go wheel to go. Ready? He's locked. We're ready. Ready to go, quick to pick up. I mean, don't get me wrong, I love the DC-3, I love the DC-4, but I mean, I'm here for the C-46. Chris can't legally fly until the plane is empty on the final leg home. For now, he has to sit, watch, and wait. Put him on the three, let him do freighters, let him learn how to take care of a DC-3, and then move up, just like the other boys did. And when he does get to fly, Chris's confidence is going to get a harsh dose of Devin. As the afternoon passes down on the ramp, the wind is picking up. 40 gusting, 70 kilometers. And that's going to create a challenge for a young pilot who's already come a long way at Buffalo, Graham Ferguson. Right now, I'm just checking all the, the locks and the chocks. Make sure the locks are real and tight. Hey, they don't have any wiggle to them, and especially the rudder locks. I just want to make sure everything's good and tight. Graham's been at work since 4 a.m. when he prepped and flew the morning freighter, but he's always ready to do his share of work. He's been slugging it out since day one. Buffalo Airways was his first, you know, commercial operator, and uh, he's been—he went the hard way, and he's doing really well. 
Now he's the senior co-pilot on the DC-3 and DC-4. And today, Buffalo Joe is throwing a new obstacle at him. A lot of strips in the north are one-way strips. They don't have a crosswind strip. Only Yellowknife Hay River has a cross strip. So even though there's an alternate runway here, Joe's testing Graham, making him take off on the strip directly broadside to the gusting wind. On the ground, a pilot fights against the force of a crosswind using his yoke to control the ailerons. But once he gets airborne, he needs to work the pedals to move the rudder. If he lets up, the gusting wind will push him right off course. We got the pins, we got the locks, we checked the fuel for sure. Yeah, for sure. We got full mains, 40 in the oxes, and I've got all the pins in lock. Clear to go for 168. Okay. You control the direction of the airplane with your feet, which controls your rudder on your tail there, controls your left and right. God gave you two feet, two hands, two eyes, one arsehole, go fly the airplane. Clear to go for 168. Joe wants to see Graham doing some serious legwork. Okay, what I'm going to do, I'm going to walk you through this. It's total coordination, and when the wind's really strong like this, it'll kick you around from the ground to 500 feet up. Look at that wind suck. You know what's going to happen. Yeah. Now, when you're airborne, we're going to fly it away on pedals. The ailerons are just a hold. We're okay there now. I got the thrust. Crank that aileron into it. That's good. Just bring the ailerons back. Oh. OK, now she'll fly. Now get on that pedal. See that pedal? Yeah. Oh, step put on the, the nose down. Yeah. So simple it is, just kick her into the wind. Pop rudder. She'll straighten her out. On her way. 30 knot cross with no trouble. Once again, Graham's proven reliable. But tomorrow, he'll be facing the hardest test he's ever had at Buffalo. Oh, here we go on course. Northwest, up the Mackenzie Valley. We piled a bunch of stuff on top. That was from the wells, eh? I think this is all wells. The C-46 crew is on their final stop in Norman Wells. I do strive to be the best of the best, and. You know, I, I do kind of want to stand out a little bit, you know, from the other pilots as somebody that can, you know, handle the airplane and, and knows his stuff. And Chris is itching for his turn in the right seat. Sorry, bro. He's waited all week for this moment, and he has no doubts about how it's going to go. I am getting what I came here to get. I've been told that, you know, I, I got a really, you know, good set of hands and feet, and I can really fly the airplane. Oh, starts. I'm a to you. Pumps. Hold off. cross reads closed. Group tabs. Take your time there. Pumps. Take your time. Read the damn thing. Temps and pressures you forgot. Just like Graham, Chris is facing a hard crosswind today. Flying go right straight across now. Yeah, it looks like pretty much right across the beam there. It was a bit of a windy day and uh, the wind actually posed a bit of a challenge. The 46's high profile and massive tail make it a prime target for wind. And the small rudder makes it a huge challenge to steer in the air. Look, 312 is on the roll. You gotta watch what you're doing. It's when it starts to gust a bit in there that it, it gets a little hairy in the 46. As the plane lifts off, if Chris can't work his pedals with enough power, the plane will veer out of control. What are you doing? Black coordinated. I have control. control. What the hell are you doing there? Got away from me. Something wrong with this damn thing? Are you just not playing coordinated? I was giving her on that rudder. Well, the ball was all the way out, so you couldn't have been giving her that much. I was getting a Charlie horse out, I feel okay, I don't know. Not ah, Charlie horse, Christ. Right I was just here. saying, that's how hard I was giving her on there. Because I pushed it in all the way, I barely trying. Just caught me off guard, that's all. I know. You gotta fly coordinate, man. Yes, sir. I mean, you ain't getting no speed for flying like this. My ball was over here like that until I kicked her over. If you can't push that rudder in, 
when you have a stiff crosswind like that without getting a friggin' Charlie horse. Not saying it to be rude, but I understand you better hit the gym. Chris wanted to fly the hardest plane he could, but it might just be too much. I f***ed up. That's fine. Yes, sir. I'm saying f***ing sir. Oh, yeah. And he'll be facing a tougher captain than Devin before he can become a co-pilot. On the Buffalo Airways ramp, the L-188 Lockheed Electra is on the move. The plane and its crew have been working non-stop for months. Buffalo desperately needs to certify new pilots. So today, Graham will be trying to conquer this very daunting plane. We're heading up to George Lake. I'm just trying to be the next guy checked out on the Electra. Graham will be training on today's fuel haul to the ice strip at Goose Lake. We're going to be busy today and tomorrow. And he'll be training under Captain Brian Harrison. Well, I'm not going to organize the load myself. We're going to have to. No, nope, that, that's fine. I just spoke to Graham too. For Brian, spring is the enemy of an ice trip. All of these trips are just adding to the end result, and the end result is going to be we're going to sure lose the ice. Yeah. Oh yeah, the clock definitely is ticking when there's an ice strip involved. And once you start getting uh, clear blue ice, the heat radiates through there and it polishes it just like a curling rink. And then uh, you have no control. The strip will be a whole new experience for Graham. I, I take off from the ice strip and I land here and yell night when we're empty, eh? So that I can get my training in. And Graham's already facing a huge new challenge. A plane that's 40,000 pounds heavier and twice as fast as the DC-3, and far more complicated than anything he's ever flown. You're 20 back, and you blink, and you're, you're on the ground, so you know, you've got to, you to really know your shit. Welcome back by supper time. OK, we're on shift power. With fellow captain A.J. DeCoast in the left seat, Brian's flying in the co-pilot spot. What do you want? Rotate. But on the way home, that'll be Graham's seat. He'll be taking off on the ice and flying as co-pilot. But that's going to be a problem. He's been up since long before dawn, prepping the morning freighter. Up at 3 in the morning here at 3.30. Fly down to Hay River, pick up some freight, back to Yellowknife, unload it, put the plane to bed, and hop on the Electra and go to wherever they're going. Yeah, you got to get your training in on the Electra whenever I can get a chance. So eat, sleep, breathe planes. Has been for the last four years, it seems. <laughs> His real day is only just beginning. You've been going non-stop all day pretty much. It can be a little tough to keep focused. He'll have to find his focus in a hurry if he has any hope of performing in this plane. Back at Buffalo, Chris Staples is still feeling the sting of his last flight with Devin. He's hoping he hasn't blown his shot at the 46. You ready? There's only so many airplanes and so many seats, and you know we're all here for the same thing as we all want to fly. But winter's winding down, and Buffalo will soon be in a jam. The summer months are going to pull pilots away to fight fire. I need a new generation of C-46 co-pilots. And there's only one rampy with any experience on the big cargo plane. As soon as those guys get on tanker training, that's going to take Ian, I, so you and David would be the C-46 guys. So you're basically telling me I'm going to be the C-46 guy this summer? We have to be. 46 this summer, eh? Holy. You know, Joe's even said only one in 30 pilots can handle it. And, and I feel that my pilot ability is appropriate to, to handle the 46. But to show he's up to the challenge, Chris will have to pass his flight test or check ride. But we're not going to make it easy for him. He's got to learn. He's got to learn quick. Yeah, that's my, uh, right now this is my office and that's going to be my office, so it's a good change. <laughs> I 
have very little forward visibility. Check that. 500 kilometers northeast of Yellowknife, the Electra crew hones in on the mining camp and its frozen strip. Yep, here's the Esker coming along here. Following in this Esker. We'll be right on track. We're showing 2.8 miles. There's the Herc right there. You got the Herc, I got the strip. Okay, turn 100. Set me power. 30. Power. 20. Now they'll find out how the ice is holding up. Yeah, it's not that rough, Brian. Eh? Well, no, it's not bad, actually. It's pretty good. Okay. Well, we're here, boys. Yeah. The strip is still in good shape, and the crew can pump out their load of diesel. Comes the pump. AG, open the valve up. It takes about an hour to pump out the 36,000 liters of fuel. And when they're finished, an exhausted Graham will take the right seat for the flight home. This is my first full leg in the Electra. This will be my first takeoff and hopefully my first landing. It's almost empty. All right. Go over it about a billion times in your head and then uh, hope to heck you don't f it up when you get there. <laughs> Okay, are you comfortable in that seat? Yes. Okay, you can reach the rudder pedals. Yeah. Lock that seat in the center position. Push the button in and slide it to the center of the airplane. Towards her, towards, towards her locks. Right. Graham, it's your takeoff. Ready on the right. So, set max power. Yep. Up off the ramps. 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 Start accelerating. Setting max power. You take off and you, you first put the powers on, like it starts a little nuts. 70 knots. No, or you want. There we go. Rotate. Not too fast. Okay. Keep the pitch coming up now. Roger. Keep the pitch coming out here. And these gently, gently, gently. Deceleration. Acceleration means drop the nose. Roger. Okay, what speed are you supposed to be climbing at? 210. Not 190. 190. Roger. Correct. Never mind. Just keep accelerating now to 210 knots indicated. Looking for 210. The airplane's got 16,000 horsepower. One of the biggest things is learning to manage manage the mass and manage the speed of the airplane. Things start to happen a little quicker, so it's a major learning curve. And today, it's going to prove much too steep for a very tired Graham. Back in Yellowknife, Chris is feeling ready for his check ride. That's why you hired me, Mikey, to get the job done. You're like, this guy can get the job done, I can stick him in any airplane, and he'll fly it, and get her done. I'll fly her in, I'll put fuel in it, and get her done. All right. Well, it's an option. We'll, we'll see how it goes. All the talk and all the experience was in a classroom uh, in a controlled airplane. So up until he gets into the wild, jumps into a World War II airplane, and flies cargo around, everything is just hot air. And Mikey really wants to see what's behind the talk. Have you flown sure. shorter yet? He hasn't fallen shorter yet, eh? Oh, no. We're going to schedule a drive. Right. shorter. You, you would do that, wouldn't you? Of course. Pilot never flown. Yeah, here's a pilot you, you haven't really talked to before. Yeah, he's like, going to do your yeah. ride. What better person to break somebody of their cockiness uh, as Jeff Schroeder, who is a rock star in my brain? And Jeff Schroeder is the most experienced C 46 pilot in the world. I challenge anybody to put forth a person with uh, 22,000 hours on a single type of aircraft. And if that wasn't intimidating, he's got a no-nonsense reputation that makes even Devin look tame. This morning, he'll be in the cockpit putting Chris through his paces. This is the maiden voyage with uh, Jeff Schroeder. A little bit of pressure there. I'm sure he's got high standards. He knows his airplane theoretically better than anybody else. 
So, you know, it just adds a little bit of pressure to the ride, you know? And as Chris preps the plane for his ride, they're not getting off to a good start. Why is he putting that away? Get over here. Chief Pilot Justin Simley will ride along to monitor and evaluate Chris. This is it, boys. Okay, you're clear on the right. We can go for the more takeoff so when you're ready. Relax. I'll call fast enough. Five two two's down the roll. Okay, set cruise power. Do you know how to do that? It's time for Chris to live up to his own height. On the Yellowknife runway, Chris Staples is on the way in from his check flight. Now he'll find out if he's made the grade as Buffalo's newest C-46 co-pilot. Chris's entire year at Buffalo has been leading up to this moment. All right. Congrats. Thanks again, man. You got her, man. It really means a lot. Yeah, it really does. That's great. Good for you, congrats. Right. You did good, yeah, you did a nice nice first ride on the C-46, and uh, nice to get another guy on the line. We got her, boys. <laughs> General Justin said I did very well, especially for my first ride, and the first ride in the 46 for that matter. So Justin was happy, so I was happy, and he signed off on my, on my license. A big, fat C-46 stamp goes on my license, and uh, it was a good day for sure. There's a lot of people that I had a lot of doubt and said I was crazy and you're never gonna make it and you know whatever. So fuck him. Look where I am now. I mean, my first checkout, my first professional, like commercial checkout is in the hardest airplane in the world to fly. You know, I'm a legitimate C 46 pilot. I'm 23 years old. I think the future looks pretty good for me in the aviation industry. But there is a surprise in Chris's immediate future, and it's not one he's going to like. You want the landing chicks? Uh, I'll take them with the gear, yeah. okay. which I'll take shortly, but not now. Okay. As the Electra crew makes final approach into Yellowknife, it'll be up to the guy who's been working since 3.30 a.m. to make the landing. Gray up. Yeah. You want to navigate a little bit? Sorry. You're so fixated on setting the power, you forgot to fly the airplane. That is not good. Okay. Well, you're going 2,500 feet a minute down, and you're 1,500 feet above the ground. What are you doing? What are you doing, Graham? Myself some power. Bring the power back and bring your speed back. You're 30 knots fast, okay. Roger. And you're way f***ing low. If you do your approach and you come over the threshold 10 knots faster than threshold speed, you're, you're burning up runway to try and slow the airplane down before you touch down. Graham's only 200 feet above the ground and coming in way too fast. Don't dive at the f***ing ground. What's all those red f***ing lights there on the side of the runway? 200. At the rate he's flying, Graham's going to run out of runway before he can come to a stop. I wasn't flying the airplane. My brain was just mush. You're 15, you're 20 knots fast, Graham. Correct. 100. 50. 40. Start your foot. 30. 20. High, you're way high. You're way high. You're way high. You're way high. 10. Come up on the ramp. On the ramps. I have control. You have control. The brain went on strike and blinked him on the ground. I'm like, oh, that was terrible. Tell me a little story about that approach, Graham. It's not a good one. No. From about miles back, yeah. you were a passenger. I don't know what happened, but uh, you, you can't have your brain check out in a 400 mile an hour airplane. So it's going to take a while. It means quite a bit more airplane than he's used to flying. 
I don't like making excuses. That was just no shit. No shit. It's a new morning on the Yellowknife ramp, and Chris Staples' first flight as a certified co-pilot. So we got uh, five skids for the wells and a skidoo. Okay. So I come in the next morning thinking, all right, here we go, this is it. To the wall, to the wall. I was, I was very antsy, I was very excited, I was very eager to, to please and to, you know, to show that you know, I, I, do, I do deserve to be here. But the captain isn't so sure. Uh, we're just doing a regular flight up the valley today. And Dave is co-pilot, and Chris is seeing how he's going to work out. I'm the co-pilot, Jeff? Co-pilot, yes. Am I really? Always have been. This is a test for him to see. So he's going to do everything, but if things don't work out, you're springing into action. I have a dentist appointment at 11.30. Dentist appointment at 11.30? No, you're not going to be there. You know you're coming on the train trip anyway. No, I didn't. Yeah, you did. No one told me. Yeah, you did. I had an appointment today. I was just uh, letting you know I won't be able to make it. Chris wasn't expecting another test run today. He thought he'd be recognized as the co-pilot. I'm the official co-pilot, but today's a test for you, so you'll... Well, my name's on the board. It's co-pilot. I don't understand. So did you have to cancel your dentist appointment? Yeah. What the f David doesn't have to be sitting there in the back seat just in case, you know, like... I can do this. You'll sit in the seat, you'll do everything. I'm just there. What else does he want? What else does he want? I don't know. Chris might have the high of being checked out on a new airplane, especially his first commercial airplane. But ultimately, that means nothing until he can figure out actually how to fly it. And nobody else needs to be aware of it, because I mean, David didn't know until this morning. He didn't have a lunch, didn't have his headset, had a dentist appointment. You know, his name wasn't on the board. My name was the only name on the board. But I'll just do the flight, do the best I can, and hopefully that'll be that. It was more, almost more confusing. You know, what else does he want to see? What am I doing wrong? It's just frustrating that you're trying to get yourself in that particular mode to do well. It's just kind of like a mind game, or if he's trying to bring me down, or, you know, See if I get frustrated, turn a cold shoulder or something like that. You know, I, I honestly, I still don't really know why David was there. But before they even take off, he's about to find out. What's your radio outbound? Jeff wants to know the compass heading for their departure. 10.5. Uh, 10.5. 10.05, sir. Say the radio again. 1105. What was it? Sorry, 105. 105. Yeah. Roughly what direction are we heading? 280. That makes sense. Chris is giving the inbound coordinates instead of outbound. He's off by 180 degrees. You really, really, really need to think about every little thing you do. Imagine if I would have let you take off and take track up on there. We've been in Churchill. Even after takeoff, Jeff isn't letting Chris's mistake pass. Slow down. Take your time. Think about it. It has to make sense. You know what I mean? It has to make sense. But as they head out of Yellowknife... Whoa, 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 whoa! What are you doing, Chris? Whoa, 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 easy. Chris is climbing too fast. You're pulling way too f***ing hard, Chris. Can't you feel it in your seat? I can feel it, but I'm, like, I'm barely moving the stick. With Jeff riding him, it's a long flight to Delaney. Oh man, a little bit of the wind there, eh? Now, it should be a quick offload and trip home for Chris and the crew. Just offloading some freight to Delaney. But the C-46 has other plans. Started up, this up just didn't feel right. We weren't getting enough RPM out of it. Uh, 
Chris's first flight post checkout just became grounded 500 kilometers from home. Guy? I am. I got Jeff online. Okay. In the Buffalo hangar, mechanic Adam Smith is getting a distress call. Hello. Is the tank level coming down, way down when you run it? The C-46 engine problems in Delaney are looking even worse. A teaspoon of brass. Ooh, that's not good. Now the crews found metal shavings in the engine oil. A bad sign. That usually indicates uh, some kind of bearing. I think that thing's done. The crew will have to replace the 4,500 pound engine outside on the freezing Delaney tarmac. It's, it's a long weekend ahead for the mechanics back to us. Get the airplane ready. Okay, keep going in. Okay, stop. Yeah, that's good. Who's going? I'll go. Three hours later, Buffalo's second C-46 is on approach into Delaney and the isolated ramp where the crew will be working. Get out. Hey, Jeff, get out. While the crew starts to unload their equipment, conditions are turning ugly. Windsock. Well, the windsock's pointing straight out. And the wind is going to make their work a lot harder. When we got to Delany, it was slowing 40 kilometers an hour. Well, the airplane's rocking around in the wind because it's, it's designed to move with wind, right? The wind is blowing right up the ass end of the airplane. The elevators are bouncing up and down. The rudder's flopping away. So we're making everything tight right now so we don't do more damage than is necessary. That's better anyway. You're trying to take a heavy component off, and as it's vibrating, that can create like extra G-forces on the chain, and it can snap the chain. And if anybody's underneath it, it could hit them. You got him, Curtis? Yeah. Yeah, it's a wind. There is a lot of factors that you do not want to deal with when it's high winds. It's just not safe. And no component is as challenging as the four and a half thousand pound engine itself. And the hard part is still to come, hoisting up and connecting the new engine. Look, you can see some dust and snow and shit coming off the water. Tomorrow, it's supposed to be even worse. Tomorrow could be a very rough, and dangerous day. The next morning, back in Yellowknife, the Electra is set for another fuel run. And one trainee is hoping for a good day. I really I want to be on that, that airplane. I really want to be on the Electra. And after messing up last time, Graham needs to show he can handle the plane. Out of uh, 1 to 10, I'd say uh, 1 being the lowest. I'd probably be at a 1. Before start, the battle. There is a lot more to that airplane than any other airplane I've flown. But that's how you just turn the boom knob there. After a year and a half as flight engineer or second officer on this plane, Scott Blue has some tips for the rookie. Now, you had actually some problems dialing up your altimeter setting because. It was just at first, it was just the way it's set up because they got middle bars on the top and then the other ones on the bottom. Everything runs off the electrics in there, so there's definitely a lot to it and a lot to know. Here's all your warning lights. Oh, there's lots of warning lights. Any questions so far? No, so far, so good. I like challenges. I mean, that's, that's one of the reasons why I went into the aviation and took it as a career. I like constantly being challenged. Wouldn't mind sitting here for a little bit longer, or a lot longer, but unfortunately, we're out of time. we got to keep the job going. So that's step one of 101. Oh, they're making out with those tanks. They almost full. And today, on the way home, 
Graham will face the same challenge that beat him so badly the last time. Set this guy up now. In the air north of Yellowknife, Graham Ferguson is in the hot seat. Anything else you can think of but now is the time to talk about it before it gets busy. Yeah. And it'll get busy real soon with 20, like 120 miles, yeah. but that's yeah. only 20 minutes. Yeah. So now's the time. Yeah. It's his second chance to land the Electra, and this time he's determined to time it right. Sort out as best I can in my head. You have control. All right. Four more degrees to the right. Gentle, nice, smooth movement. Nine, track 189, and it is to the right. Graham, don't talk to yourself. Just think. Just think. Four Slow down to 190 zero knots, and I'll give you some flop. Once again, Graham's struggling against the plane's speed. The amount of power those engines produce is a lot of power, and just the throttle movement's uh, kind of a big thing. Watch your speed, down. Graham. You're, you're way increase, too slow. Sorry, increase. You're way too slow. She's very responsive to uh, to power adjustments. It's just getting used to the little little minute power adjustments. All right, give me a little bit more power. Give me 1100. Check. Keep your hand on the power. Graham has to ride the sensitive throttle, timing his descent so that he hits the threshold with enough time and enough runway to bring his plane to a stop. Yeah, don't talk to yourself, just fly. 100. 50. Start throttling back. 30. 20. 10. 30. All in all, that was pretty good. He's a fast airplane. You like that, eh? I love it. You wouldn't need a training captain if everybody could fly the airplane. So, you know, it takes time, and uh, and he'll be fine. Well, you, did, uh, you actually did pretty good once you, start, once you uh, quit pumping the controls and stuff. I like being challenged, and I like, I like having to attack, attack an airplane like I'm attacking this one. I've had some fun days at Buffalo, like days where I've had a real good time. That was the best. Don't want to give him too many compliments or his head will get way too big and then it won't, won't fit into the cockpit. We won't be able to talk to him. <laughs> you sit down there for a while. I'm busy. <laughs> it's definitely something I'm really working hard for and I'd be really happy to get it. Yeah. On the ramp in Delaney. Brand new used. Adam and Curtis have found a window in the heavy gusts. It took a while for the wind to stop blowing enough that we could actually do the engine change. They're hoping this calm lasts long enough so they can finish their repairs. My biggest concern with the engine change was the wind. Uh, it's 4,500 pounds. If something moves the wrong way, the gust takes it the wrong way, you could lose a finger. It could fall off and crush somebody. Because when the wind starts catching stuff, it'll just snap things right out of your hand and start spinning the engines and the, that cowling will want to f off and so we try and do all this when it's not too windy but they're already running out of time it is starting to pick up a bit though which is not good yeah he's gonna go up and i'm gonna pull up again oh oh oh, oh. okay yep has to go up. Yeah. Okay, in. Yeah. Real slow. And go up. Go up. I'm stuck on your. Yeah, well, pull it out. No, I'm trying to come down a bit. It might straighten out, I guess. Uh, a bit more my way. Perfect. Okay, stop. Curtis has the engine in place, but they're not out of trouble until it's connected. If we crouch, because of the boat coming off, I'm eating you first. <laughs> They've got the engine secured. Now the crew can finish the job and get the 46 back to work. Now the cowling, then the prop, put some fluid lines on, tighten the prop up. I think that'll be it for the day. Okay, right there. Yeah, right, right around here somewhere. One, two. Okay. Okay, I guess I'll go up there and fire them up. 
Yeah, make sure everything works. Buffalo's depending on this engine to spark up flawlessly and get their 46 back in the air. The most nerve wracking part is the first time you go to fire it up. Clear on two. Clear on two. Because you could get it to fire up and then it could seize right there. Let's go. Come on. I, I want to go home. So the C-46 can get back in the air. And Chris Staples is about to get the chance he's been waiting for. On the Delaney tarmac, Buffalo's mechanics have fought the wind and changed the engine on the C-46. We're going to bring her home. I'm going to finish my, finish what I started to bring her home. David's already gone home. So Chris finally gets to fly as the official co-pilot on his dream plane. Yeah, open your window, y'all. Yeah. I love the smell of ab gas in the morning. For the first time in his life, Chris is actually getting paid to fly a plane. Delaney Radio, good afternoon. It's Buffalo Plaza right now. It's a very cool feeling to know that you're you're being paid to do what you love to do rather than basically scraping up every penny you can off the off the floor and under the couch to to get one hour and you know. And Chris is sharing the cockpit with the captain who's flown this plane more than any other pilot in the world. So to fly an airplane like that with, with a pilot like that is is an honor and uh, you know I'm sure in 10, 20 years I'll go back to my logbook and, and see Jeff Schroeder in there and it'll, you know. It's something to something to brag about a little bit, I think. Boost pumps. They're off and maintaining. Oil and fuel pressure. Are you looking to? Or are you just reading off the checklist? You really, really, really need to slow down. Think about every little thing you do. Roger. Please try it again. Boost pumps. They're off and maintaining. Great. Take your time. Do not grab a handful of f***ing prop, whatever you do. All right, get your hands out of there. One hand only. On takeoff, don't be f***ing staring at the airspeed. Five one nine's rolling. Chris has already made his first big mistake. He's forgotten to check if there are any warnings on the route, known as notices to airmen or NOTAMs. Well, were there any applicable NOTAMs today? But when I take control, I can bring them out and tell you. A little late now, isn't it? Chris might be official, but to Jeff, he's just beginning to learn this plane. I asked you twice about this. Point of interest. He needs a lot of mentoring before he can be let loose on the aircraft as a full-fledged uh, co -pilot. But Jeff has already taught him the most important lesson, how much he still has to learn. You realize you don't really know anything, you know. It was a real eye-opener for sure, yeah. Let's go for three right away. Three set, and again. And Chris is learning from a master. I really look up to those guys and, you know, and I'd like to be in their spot where somebody like me now is, is looking up to me, thinking, wow, I'd like to be that guy, you know. It's, that's what I'm working towards, and, and I'll do it one day. So I'm going to beat you into submission first. Then, then we can get the good training going. 